So today we're gonna to be putting these 12 volt lights on this electric quad right here. And while this is a child's toy, the same concepts apply to all 12 volt lighting. So like these lights right here, same concept. You wanna put a light bar on your truck, lights on your boat, anything that has a 12 volt system, what we're going over here today uh, is what you're gonna to need to know and it's really not that hard. So we got this for my son for Christmas and as you can see, it has no lights. It's not that we want him out riding at night, it's just sometimes with small kids, you go out for like 10 minutes, 10 minutes turns into 30 minutes. Wouldn't you know the sun's gone down and it would be good to have some lights on there just for safety. So to get that done today, we have a few different things and I will link to everything down in the description below, but uh, I think it all came off of Amazon. These are our headlights that we'll be using. They're 12 volt LED headlights. We have a 12 volt uh, handlebar mounted switch. These are going to be our tail lights. They're kind of cool, they're red and I think they're made for motorcycles. They just, um, they stick on with double-sided tape. So these are gonna be super easy to install. This is a inline fuse, so we uh, don't burn the thing down. And then I got some wire that's like run together, you know, the red and the black there. So they're stuck together. And then this guy we'll talk about in a minute. Don't worry about him just yet. Really quick, we're gonna demonstrate just how easy this is. We're also gonna test our lights because I found um, that before where I go, I install something and it doesn't work. So we're gonna, we're gonna test all these out real quick before we throw them in. Uh, but it's really as simple as a red wire and a black wire. There's gonna be some more stuff we're gonna add, but that's the basic principle. So this right here is a 12 volt power supply. It is going to mimic a battery for us on the bench here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna hook our red to our red and our black to our black. Make sure they're not touching and then turn it on. There you go. So that one works. Good news, that one works too. Okay, so you may have just noticed we have a switch on this and we don't have a switch with a battery, right? So that's where our handlebar switch is gonna come in. I'm not gonna do it with, actually, you know what? We can do it, let's do it. So our switch is going to go on the positive side, so the red side, and it is going to go in between uh, the lead coming from our battery and then to our light. So red goes to red, right? The other side, which is a green on this switch, to the red going into our light. So that's all That's all positive power. Even though we're using a green wire here, I just don't have another red wire. But we've got positive coming from our battery to our switch into our light. So right now our switch is off. Make sure everything is not touching again. And so if we turn on our switch here, nothing should happen. And nothing happened. Now once we hit our switch on our handlebars, there you go. Now there is one thing about switches you need to know and that switches are only rated to a certain amperage, meaning you can only put so much power through it. So we need to go figure out real quick what the switch is rated to, because I didn't even bother to look, and then what our lights are rated to and figure out how much power is going to be passing through this switch and is this switch stout enough or not. So the way to figure this all out is pretty easy. We're just gonna go find the switch that we bought on Amazon. We're going to go down to the specifications section and it tells us that this is a 12 volt and 10 amp switch. So that means it's capable of carrying a current of 10 amps through the switch. So that's good to know, but we've gotta check our lights, right? All right, so here's our lights, but unfortunately it doesn't tell us the amps, it's telling us watts. So it's telling us 60 watts. The good news is you can figure out what that is in amps real quickly because you know there's a thing called the internet. Actually, let's see if this works. Alexa, how many amps is 60 watts at 12 volts? From answers.com, a 60 watt bulb at 12 volts will pull five amps of current. There you go, five amps. So we've got five amps for our big lights. Our little lights are, gotta look those up too, but those say 3.12 watts, which is almost nothing. Alexa, what is 3.12 watts at 12 volts in amps? From answers.com, at 12 volts, 12 watts would equals one amp. In other words, for any given voltage, the same number of watts equals one amp. Well, that's easy to remember. 12 watts is one amp on a 12 volt system. So we're pulling less than an amp on the taillights. We're pulling five amps on the headlights. So that's, let's round up six amps. We're safe, we've got a 10 amp switch. We are nowhere near the capacity of the switch, so I think we're just gonna run a switch. If for some reason you exceeded the rating of your switch, all you would do, you would pull out one of these guys, so this is a relay, and basically all a relay is, is it's a heavy duty switch. So our switch, what it would do is trigger the relay, and then the relay would actually transfer the power from the battery to your lights, but you know what? We don't have to worry about that today. 
So we know we're pulling about six amps with all of our lights on. So I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, 10 amp fuse in our inline fuse here. And that is because our switch is only rated to 10 amps. So we don't want more than 10 amps going through the switch and frying things. And our fuse is gonna go as close to the battery as we can make it. And the reason for that is the way a fuse works is it heats up and then basically explodes in here. And so you don't want your wire heating up over a long distance and the fuse being at the very end and your wire getting real hot and melting something or catching something on fire. So it doesn't have to be right on the battery, but you know, as close to the battery as you can get it. So you also need to make sure you get the right type of wire. We're using 16 gauge wire and that should be plenty for the six amps that we're pulling. Alexa, how many amps can 16 gauge wire hold at 12 volts? A 16 gauge wire can only handle 10 amps at 12 volts. Oh, there you go. So our wire can hold up to 10 amps. Our switch can hold up to 10 amps and we have a 10 amp fuse. So we're doing, I think we're doing all the right stuff. And so the way we're gonna run the rest of our lights is they all need their own power and their own ground. And so the way we're gonna do that is pretend this green wire is actually a wire coming from the switch, which it is up to the front of the quad where the headlights are gonna be. And then it's going to split off and run into both the power for each headlights and then the negative is gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take one negative wire all the way up to the front of the quad, run it all the way back to the battery, and that will be the negative for both lights. And so when we turn them on, they should both, there you go, they're both on. And so we're gonna do the same thing to get the taillights working as the headlights. We'll run a power wire from the switch to the back of the quad, and that will be our uh, red wire here. This, These ones actually, they come with a yellow wire that's like low intensity and red is high intensity. We're just gonna go with high intensity. And then uh, the negative wire, the black wire, will run all the way back to the negative terminal of the battery. Now, the only last piece of the puzzle that makes this one a little different is this is a 24 volt quad. So I said we were doing a 12 volt light install, right? So this is a 24 volt to 12 volt converter. So you can see right here, 24 volts come in and 12 volts come out. So we're gonna hook our red and our black here up to our battery. Actually, I'm probably gonna switch it off the switch source so the lights can't get left on on that thing. And then out, uh, we've got black and yellow. The yellow is gonna be our red, our positive. Black's gonna be our negative, just like before. And so if you have a 12 volt system, this is a step you don't have to do. But for me, uh, we need to do this to get from 24 volts to 12 volts. And so to get all that connected today, we've got a few different things. These are the uh, like kind of like quick heat shrink and solder all at once things. So you just, you put your wire in here, uh, one part of the wire on each side, and then you hit it with some heat and it shrinks up and this little silver uh, thing in the center here that solder and it melts and solders at the same time I know some people don't like these but I've been using them for a few years now and I've never had a problem with it It's much quicker than just like actually solder soldering and heat shrinking It's a lot more steps This is quick and easy and then uh, we've got some ring terminals to connect to the battery and uh, it is um, You don't just use whatever color you want So uh, you can see here red is for 22 to 16 gauge wire blue is for 16 to 14 and yellow is for 12 to 10 So make sure you're using the right size connector for your wire there so we need to, I probably need to actually make a bracket for the front headlights. I could just screw right into this, but I don't really want to. I want it to be a little bit cleaner of an install. The back ones, they fit like right on here pretty good. So we're just gonna stick those on there. And then I also, I've never taken this thing apart before. So we need to get it apart, figure out where the power is running from and get it wired in. So here we go. Technically, everything should work now. Power on to the vehicle, power on to the lights. We've got our taillights there. We got our headlights there. So this up here to mount the lights, that's just a piece of flat bar that I took and uh, drilled through, tapped into the frame. Same back here for the converter. There was just a good spot for it right there. So drilled through the frame, tapped into that, put some screws. So I wound up, I found switched power and uh, negative wire here running through this harness. So all I did was I made little, um, 
like you can see with this one right here, it's like a Y connector. So it comes out of that, splits off, one end goes back into the harness it came from, and the other end goes into uh, the power to our um, converter right here. So that way, if anything ever messes up, I ever want to undo it, all I got to do is take out those connectors, put it back the way it was, and it's like it never happened. So I do, if you notice, uh, I put some heat shrink where you have multiple wires going together. I just like to put heat shrink around them to help hold them together and that way they won't fall apart. Same here, uh, same up front under there. And so if you notice for all these uh, little heat shrink solder connection things, I've been using a lighter. Um, I know there are heat guns out there and I actually, I have one over there that will do it. They have like a nice little wraparound thing, but they take forever and I just don't have good luck with them. I think a lighter just works better. You just have to be careful not to overdo it because as soon as you see that solder start flowing, like you're done, just stop. If you keep going, you're gonna melt right through the thing. You can also melt your wires if you're not careful. So it takes a little bit more skill with a lighter, but I think it works a lot better. And so that's kind of it. I mean, what we need to do now is uh, put on our, you know, tail lights and whatnot. We need to take some zip ties, clean everything up, and then we should be able to take this thing for a test ride. Hello? did it good job you like the lights yeah so there you have it 12 volt lights on a 24 volt quad i'm sure some of you are wondering why i didn't just put 24 volt lights on there because you can get 24 volt lights and i think these are actually rated for 24 volts the thing is though um switches for 24 volts are hard to find and when you can find them they're expensive i could not find a handlebar switch that was good for 24 volts so that's why we did the whole converter thing but again wasn't that hard uh they work the kid likes them I'm gonna call that a success. So, until next time, I think it's my turn for a ride. See you later. Does it fit? I think we need a Mexican clown to get what I want. And then, you know how I got this out? I just Put a white dab and fit in there. Yeah.